So as we all have heard, Fred Ridley and the Masters have released a statement saying that they are going to allow the live players that are currently eligible for the Masters to play in the Masters. How exciting. Did you think that was going to be some, did you think there was going to be a different uh, announcement? Did you think that wouldn't happen? I personally believe that it, we got exactly what I thought we would get, that they would say, yes, we're going to let you play. Here's why. Here are my top five reasons why Augusta National decided to allow live players to play in the Masters coming up, and I think it's fantastic. I love it. I love what they're doing, and I think it's uh, a brilliant move. Brilliant move for these five reasons. Number one, in uh, my, my fifth to number one, five to one. So we'll start with this, legal reasons. You see, Augusta National, they, they've got some legal battles going on here and there. You could read about that stuff. And I think if they were to ban live players, I think it would have opened the door in these other things they have, which I don't even know much about. So we, no need to talk about things that like that that are just kind of under the radar. It's, it's not even important. But if they were to ban them, that could potentially open the door for more legal difficulties. So like, oh, we're going to exclude these players. And then it comes back and they, it just looks bad for them. And it could be looked at in some legal way. And I'm no legal expert, but it could be looked at as they have some, there's some like antitrust violations or they've got some type of monopoly on something. And I think they just wanted to stay away. Like, if we let them in, we're not going to be sued. So let's just avoid the legal lawsuits and the headaches that that would cause. So that was one reason I believe that they made that decision. Another reason is this. I believe they looked at the situation. These are smart people, the members of Augusta National, they know what's going on. They have lawyers, they have everybody and they know everybody. So they, they, it's not like a bunch of knuckleheads are making decisions here. These guys know what's up, but I think they looked at that and said, you know what? If we allow live players to play, all it's going to do is give us more eyeballs on the masters. Not that they don't already have enough, but what happens is you get more eyeballs from an audience that you don't normally have. Like, remember last year, Augusta National let Dude Perfect come and whack baseball bats, swing baseball bats and uh, wiffle balls and frisbees and whatnot down Amen Corner, right? Huge video. You looked at it and you're like, uh, did they just let YouTubers goof around on the Amen Corner? Yes, they did. And I think they realized that, hey, there's a there's an audience that is we're not really penetrating. We're not reaching that audience. So if we let this live group in, they're actually reaching that audience that we want to we want to attract also. So if we let them in, we just get it. We get another audience there. We get more eyeballs of people that we don't normally that don't normally watch golf. Smart move. Very, very smart move right there, Augusta National. The next reason is this. Just straight up hard cash money. Money talks. Here's why. Merchandise. Augusta National. To join Augusta National, okay, the membership fee, believe it, it's low. I mean, it's, it's really low. Like, you could afford it. Pretty much, I, I would say most people could probably like if they, if they called you you'd be like I'm in. I would you would pay like the initiation fee. I think most people could scrounge up that money. In other words, it's not what you think it is. And the monthly dues are really cheap too. These are things I've just heard. So that's what the rumors are that it's pretty low. So they're not making their money off membership fees and monthly dues. That's not where they get their money. 
They get their money off the masters every year, the merchandise, the ticket sales, the TV revenue, all of that stuff. The, uh, the money that they, that's associated with that is ridiculous. So it's think about this. It's the merchandise that they're going to sell that really, really, that's where they're making a ton of money. The merchandise I was behind. I went to the masters for the first time earlier this year. I'm, I'm spending a, a few hundred bucks in the merchandising tent, just, you know, and the dude in front of me had $3,000 worth of hats I had one kind of hat, had them all three grand. I mean, people, people are, I mean, merchandise is flying off the shelves there. So I got a backpack on Monday practice round that like they were sold out. And people, I went back Sunday, people were trying to buy my backpack from me. I was like, no. And once I knew, once they, once one person said, hey, can I buy that from you? I, I thought about it. I was like, oh. And then I got more and more offers throughout the day, like everywhere I went to the point I was like, I, I can't let this thing out of my sight. So just think about that. If a live player wins and you have merchandise from Augusta National, like, I mean, it's, it's going to fly off the shelves. All of it, because it, for it's like a speculators. People are like, man, if DJ wins, or if Cam Smith wins, or if one of the live players wins, and I have merchandise from this year, that's gonna be, that's gonna be, wow, that's a memorabilia, that's collector's item stuff right there. So, the, you better get your merchandise <laughs> quick. So you're gonna make a ton of money. Next is this. Fourth reason is uh, media rights, which is very similar concept to the money it's just media rights if a live player does something spectacular during the masters like phil mickelson hitting out well there's a live player phil mickelson hitting out the pine straw or like that media right that right to that media the people that might want to buy it just think if live itself wants to show any clips of their players who, who played in the masters if they want to buy they could buy those media rights and show them on their promotions, on their broadcast, whatever, they got to pay for it. And we all know Liv's got some money. So if Augusta owns media rights to Bubba Watson hitting a spectacular shot out of the bushes and Liv wants to show that, they have to pay Augusta National tons of money. And it, I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't shock me if the price of media rights for live players is a little bit higher than everybody else's, <laughs> like it, it wouldn't come as a surprise. What do you think? How much, you got the money, I got the shot. Let's negotiate. So I think there's the media rights piece of that is huge. And it goes beyond even this little you know, a shot here, a shot there. There's a lot more to it, a lot of layers to those media rights that I think will come into play. So I think it's smart by Augusta National to say, come on in, come on in, sign away your media rights, we'll take care of you. So very smart, very smart. And uh, the final piece is this. Uh, and what I think number one reason is this, is I think it's an experiment. Personally, I think Augusta National, in my opinion, is looking at this saying, okay, we don't know what the other, what the future is going to hold here. We don't know about the other majors necessarily. I know everybody looks to us, meaning Augusta National, to make all the decisions and to do all the stuff and to kind of be the forefront and the leader of all these big major decisions. But I think they want to really take a step back and say, hold on. And I think the other major championships, like the U, from the USGA, PGA of America, the RNA, I think, I think they said, look, why don't you let them in? They probably talk to everybody. Is my my opinion? I think they would all talk, and they said, you, look, you're the first major. Like, why, why don't you guys let them in? We'll look at this the the situation. We'll assess and we'll kind of see where it goes. Let's see how the fans interact with them. I think they want to see that. I want to, I, they probably want to see, like, does DJ get boos or cheers on every tee box? And the same with how are the live players received? 
at Augusta National. I think everybody wants to look at that and say, okay, is this going to be good for the game or bad for the game? And so this is the experiment. This is the time where it's like, okay, we kind of had it, you know, a little bit last year, but now we're really fully in it. And we're going to get it kind of to the fullest extent at the biggest tournament of the year, the Masters, Augusta National. I'm going to do my best to be there. And I want to see firsthand how, like the engagement, the interaction, the fans, the other players, how it all kind of works out. And just how will it be on Sunday if there are some partnerships, some, uh, some pairings, Liv and PGA Tour guys battling for the green jacket? That is going to be very, very special. And I would not be shocked, depending on how this goes this year, in 2024, I would not, it would not shock me if there were some type of qualifying tournament or criteria for live players or players and or players from other tours to play in like some qualifier tournament or something to where these other professional tours could qualify for some select spots at Augusta National. It would not shock me if that were to happen. What do you think are other reasons why the, the Augusta National might have let the live players play? Comment down below. Whew, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be an exciting year. Thanks for listening. See you guys soon.